Welcome to the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon video series. I'm your host, Captain Matt. Today, we're talking bow riders. We're going to talk about the best and the worst manufacturers. Um, we're going to go through a whole bunch of them, and I think you're really going to enjoy this episode. So here's the list of manufacturers of fiberglass bow riders that I found at Discover Boating. So these are the ones that are still building right now for the most part. And we're going to talk about the categories. We're going to talk about the quality. And we're going to review all of them. Of course, you can check out all of our videos at Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon YouTube channel, where we've got almost a million views now, about 8,000 subscribers. And uh, you can check out the podcast, the article, at BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com and of course grab your toolkit which is well over 3,000 downloads at this point. Also, we are working on the U.S. Boat Expo.com uh, Boat Expo. It's an educational expo that uh, is around strictly buying boats. So first-time buyers, experienced buyers, there's going to be interviews with all sorts of different people. Uh, I've got one with Cito later today about boat safety. Uh, everything that you need to know, um, go check that out. It should be coming live here very, very soon if it's not already, depending on when you're watching this. So let's jump into the brands of bow riders. The first thing is the specialty brand. So these are the brands that are not your traditional family bow riders. You've got Baja and you've got Formula, which are definitely performance boats. Uh, They're designed to go a little bit faster um, and, and to be a little bit more performance oriented. The Formula is kind of a combination of performance and luxury. Uh, they, they've got a, a great little niche, very, very uh, well-made boats on both parts, uh, but more designed around speed. You've got Chris Craft, which is all about old school luxury. When I say old school, I'm talking about the looks. It's kind of that throwback look that the uh, Chris Craft have back to their olden days uh, when they were wooden boats. Now, something to remember about Chris Craft is Chris Craft has been bought and sold and has had different owners, uh, been in bankruptcy, out of bankruptcy uh, a number of times. So over the years, uh, Chris Craft has meant different things. Right now, the Chris Craft brand is that luxury um, kind of day boat looks uh, focused uh, luxury vessel um, that uh, that's where they focus all of their energy right now. But 20 years ago, they were very much a family craft, and they've been up and down in quality, and uh, now that's where they're carving out their niche. Scarab used to be very much a speedboat, uh, but again, as the market changes in the marine world, when things are good, there's everybody's making boats and everybody's building boats when things are bad. A lot of brands have gone under, uh, have been bought and sold and gone into bankruptcy and, and snatched up by other companies. So right now, Scarab is a jet boat. So they've got, they're using um, jet drives on their boats and that's where they've carved out their market in the last, I think it was three years ago, maybe 2000, no more than that, 2015 probably. 2014, 2015, I think, is when, when Scarab started building their, their jet drive boats. And Yamaha boats, uh, in the fiberglass, the Yamaha boats are the jet drive boats as well um, that are, are very popular and dominating the jet market. So let's take a look at the more traditional fiberglass stern drive, um, what, I, what I'll call family bow rider. So we've kind of thrown out those specialty brands um, and, and you'll see all of these are U.S. made boats. You'll see I've starred Bayliner and Campion. Bayliner, some of them are made in Mexico uh, and Campions are made up in Canada. So these are the ones that we're going to focus on for the freshwater bow riders. Bayliner, Bryant, Campion, Chaparral, Chris Craft, Cobalt, Crown Line, Four Winds, Glastron, Larson, Monterey, Regal, Rennell, and Rinker are no longer building boats uh, as of the last couple of years. Rennell's been a little bit longer than that. Sea Ray, Starcraft, Stingray, and Tahoe, which is the Tahoe uh, fiberglass boat built by Tracker Marine, not the Tahoe Avalon pontoons, uh, which can get a little confusing. So let's take a look at the value brands first. Uh, when I look at value brands in the bow riders, it's Bayliner, 
and Tahoe with Glastron and Rennell in the in the ranking. Next, we have the mid-level boats, and we're going to talk about why uh, in just a little bit. So in the mid-level, this is where a majority of, of boats are going to be kind of lumped. Um, they do some things really well, some things that they cut a little bit to, to keep the cost down. Bryant, Campion, Crown Line, uh, which we've owned, my family has owned several Crown Lines, a great boat, uh, but in that mid-level range. Four Winds, Larson, Monterey, Rinker, Starcraft, and Stingray. And in the top tier, uh, in, in my mind, the top tier is Chaparral, Cobalt, Regal, and Sea Ray. And all of those are are based on kind of the build quality uh, and the construction of the boat. And like I said, we're going to go into that in a little bit more detail. So this is my ranking in order of quality. Now, I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, if you've got one of these boats you think I'm way off on, uh, let me know. Uh, if I missed a boat that uh, should be on this list, let me know as well. But of the ones that are, are right now, Cobalt, Sea Ray, Chaparral and Regal, and, and I would go in that order as well. Matter of fact, I just ran a, a Chaparral yesterday with a friend that's looking to buy it, a super nice boat, um, but I would put Cobalt and Sea Ray above them uh, in quality, just looking at a, a couple of things on that boat, and, and I think Regal is up there as well, uh, but it's it's at the uh, bottom of the top list. In the middle, Four wins. Four wins could have gone in the top category, uh, but because they've changed hands so many times, um, the the stability of the brand ha has kind of gone up and down. Crown Line is is up there. Rinker. They're not building boats anymore, um, but over over the years they've built a quality boat. Bryant, Monterey, Larson, Glastron, and, and then Campion, um, Starcraft, and Stingray. Um, you know, you could argue that maybe the Stingray should be in the value category, uh, but Bayliner and Tahoe, to me, are, are the two value boats with Rennell being a value boat when they were built, um, you know, whatever that was, six, five, six, seven years ago. Um, and again, Bayliners are made in, in Mexico, the actual boat. So let's take a look at how a fiberglass boat is built so that you don't have to just take my word for it and my experience because this is my opinion. I mean, I, I haven't cut all of these boats in half and, and there's no um, scientific research. This is just over 40 years of experience um, and going to boat shows. I mean, I, I have inspected just this year alone at boat shows well over 100 boats. I'm going up to the uh, Richmond, Virginia show on Friday to inspect another probably 50 boats. So, the first thing that happens with the fiberglass boat is you start with the mold. Now, these days, the mold are all CAD design, computer aid design, uh, and they are, are engineered to be very structurally sound and to do what the manufacturer wants them to do. In, in the olden days, they, they had to, you know, first kind of carve out their, the mold or the, the structure of the hull that they wanted and then create the mold, which was very expensive, very time-consuming, and very hand-done. Um, but most of those issues are out the window now with the improvement in technology. But this is the boat mold. This is how a boat starts. And there's one for the hull, uh, and there's one for the deck as well. And we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But the first thing they're going to do is they're going to prepare the mold with a release agent. That release agent is going to allow that the hole to pop out of the mold. It's kind of like greasing a cake pan. And then they're going to spray down the first layer, which is the shiny gel coat layer. So that's the first thing that they're going to lay down. You can see that these molds are kind of up on a, an axis there. If you look down below, you can see that kind of blue guide. That's actually going to rotate and so tomorrow, after that first gel coat dries, they're going to spin it and they're going to spray the other side. And that's what they're doing throughout the whole build process is, is after it dries, they're going to rotate it up and do the other side. Then they're going to rotate it back and do the next side. So they're going to put down the layer of gel coat. There is some differences in the quality of gel coat that Cobalt uses versus what Bayliner and Tahoe use, that top tier um, and the, the lower tiers. So that's the first thing. The next, they're going to lay 
the fiberglass. Um, now, this is called the lamination schedule, how they do this. Every builder is different. The more top-end builders, they're going to lay thicker, more durable uh, fiberglass, and they're usually going to lay more layers of it as well. So there's a couple things to know when it comes to how a boat is built. There are different types of resins that they will use. So if you think about when you're building a boat, it's fiberglass. There's a layer of kind of the woven material, which you can see right here, and it can be a thinly woven material or a little thicker uh, woven material. You can see right here. And then depending on the layer and depending on the characteristics they want from that fiberglass, they may use a polyester or a vinyl ester resin. The vinyl ester is going to be a little bit more expensive. It's going to be a little bit more rigid and a little bit more waterproof. So that vinyl ester layer is going to, is going to keep water from kind of intruding in on the fiberglass. Now, there's different directions that they'll lay the fiberglass. So the first one you can see that, whoa, the, they're laying these up and down, right? The next layer, they're going to want those material to kind of crisscross. So the next layer, they might lay at a 45 degree angle to those, and they're going to continue going back and forth. They're going to cross over the hull. If you can see, they're going past the keel and they're going up on the other side by about a foot on this, on this um, particular boat. That is going to make that layer twice as thick in that section, okay? Now, this is the hand-laid fiberglass. This is the, the stronger, more durable, more expensive, more time-consuming way to build a boat. Now, some of the less expensive, the more value brands are going to use some chopper gun layers. You can see this guy, um, he's spraying some fiberglass, and essentially it's a gun. You can see the fiberglass string right here. You can see that string coming in into his gun. The resin is coming through this hose, and it's chopping strands of that fiberglass and spraying it with resin so it's it's the right mixture, um, but you don't have that strength of a full, you know, let's say eight foot strand of that cloth of the, of the fiberglass cloth. Okay. So those are some different things to ask about the construction because what Bayliner is doing today, what Stingray is doing today, what Cobalt is doing today may be different. So today, a builder like Cobalt, they're using a lot of hand laid uh, glass they are also, they're laying a, a sheet of Kevlar down the keel of their boat. So I don't know if they go all the way back to the transom or not, but a very heavy, durable layer of that fabric um, down the keel of the boat to give it more strength, more rigidity. Now, everybody does it a little bit different. There's a lot of technical details to the lamination schedule, but ultimately how many layers of fiberglass, how, how thick is it? Um, and are they using chopper gun in any of the, any of the layers? It's becoming less common. Um, when the chopper gun first came out, there were some very inexpensive builders that were building it almost exclusively out of chopper gun. Um, and you could literally punch a hole in the fiberglass because there was no structural strength um, all the way through in some sections of the boat. Now, once that is done, what they're going to do is they're going to pop that mold out and you can see that they've got the top and the bottom, the deck and the hull. So this was built the same way, fiberglass, or excuse me, gel coat, then fiberglass, um, and then they pop it out. Now, in this picture, they've already run all the hardware, which we're going to get to in a little bit. Um, they've run the wiring. They've backplated everything. They've put in all, the, all of the plumbing for the, for the pumps. And now they're going to lower that down, and they're going to connect the hull and the deck. Now, there are some builders that will take another step, and they'll have a fiberglass liner. And what that liner will do is it will go in between um, to give them another layer of structural support, okay? 
So that's this boat does not have that fiberglass liner. Uh, so what they're going to do is they're going to drop it down and they're going to affix it with the rub rail. That's where the boat is built together and they're going to put screws. Another place where there's differences in how builders do this. Um, if you want to really know if a boat is well made, take your fingers and run it down the entire length on the bottom side of that rub rail to see how well the hull and the deck fit. This is one area where some boats will leak is there'll be water that gets in. There may be a gap back here because it's not precision built or the the way they, they fastened it with the screws and the rub rail. Um, they didn't do a great job and they just plumb it full of caulk. And then that caulk over time, you know, is going to, is going to wear out. It's going to deteriorate and now water will get in there. Or if it's really bad, they don't caulk it all the way and, and there's a gap. So a couple things to ask on the rub rail is how far between, uh, are the screws? So how many, how, what's the distance that they're fixing the screws to attach the deck to the hull? What type are they using stainless steel? Um, are they, are they going into any backplating? Because what they're going to do is those screws that are attached, you're not going to see because they're going to go on, they're going to attach it. And then they're going to put the rub rail, the stainless steel or the rubber rub rail. And that's going to cover up all those structural screws that you're seeing. So it, it, there's a lot of, as you can tell, there's a lot of hidden things in the quality of a boat that when you walk up on it at the boat show or in a showroom, you just can't tell the difference because it's all underneath. I mean, the, the first layer they played, they, they lay down is the gel coat and you can't see anything after that. You don't know. Um, what type of fiberglass was laid? Did they use chopper gun? Uh, did they use polyester or vinyl ester resin? One thing that I like to do is just pound on the hole all the way down and kind of get a sense for this is how a solid boat feels. This is how a, a cheaply made boat feels. And then determine, does it matter for me? Am I boating on a, a 50 acre lake that doesn't get super rough? Or am I going out, you know, 20 miles offshore, or am I going out on Lake Michigan uh, and, and running across from, from one section to the other? And, and that's going to depend on, does it even matter to you? I just want you to know how it's built. So, and the other thing is, how are they running the wires and, and everything? Is it going through chafe-resistant tubing? Um, or are they doing the little things that 10 years down the line, the boat's still going to be strong? And that leads us into the hardware. So the hardware is all those little things on the boat that can become kind of a pain in the ass if they're not quality pieces. So these are all stainless and aluminum. Um, some of them will be plastic depending on, on the boat. Uh, 316th stainless is going to be the, the best quality, uh, most resistant to rust and corrosion. Uh, 306 is another common type, but you'll also find some aluminum and some plastic on some of these components. So your cleats are typically going to be 316th or, or 306 stainless. You may find some aluminum. How do you tell them apart? Well, the stainless is going to be have a shinier finish. And the aluminum is going to have a little bit of a duller finish. Now, it's kind of hard to tell unless you have a stainless right next to an aluminum piece. And then are they using good quality stainless screws um, or, you know, did, did a couple of non-stainless screws get used in some sections that they shouldn't be? Stainless versus plastic versus chrome plated plastic. Um, it is another thing that you'll find this knob on a, a lot of boats you'll find is you can just tell it's not very solid. It's plastic, uh, but it looks like it could be stainless. Just if you, if you just use your, your naked eye, um, plastic. And again, it's okay. Um, it's just not going to be as durable. It's not going to be as solid. And it's an indication of other things where they've cut costs to keep the price down, um, on a boat. So those are some things to look at on the quality of construction and how I look at a boat to determine, is it uh, a top tier? Is it a mid-level or is it an entry-level value boat? And what is right for you? 
This is another thing that's important is how is that hardware mounted? So something like a cleat, uh, something like the windshield, um, are they just backplating with some small washers uh, and going right to the fiberglass and maybe their lamination schedule wasn't very thick um, and those are going to pull out over time? Um, you know, part of that is how you tie your boat up on a cleat, but all those little things matter uh, in the, the more premium manufacturers, the reason why people say, oh, it's a Cobalt, it's a Sea Ray or Chaparral, you're just paying for the name. Well, the reality is they do things different in their lamination schedule and their construction where they'll actually put a mounting plate into the fiberglass layers where they say, okay, we know we're going to put a cleat here, so we're going to put a piece of um, backing, could be starboard, it could be um, some metal, uh, it, it, who knows what it's going to be. But it's going to allow when you when you backplate it, it's going to be even more solid in that area um, so that things like this don't happen. Ask those questions if that quality is a concern. Now, here's the one thing that is is interesting is about 30, 40 percent of the price of the boat is going to be hung up in the motor. Um, so even a, a Cobalt or, or we'll go Sea Ray, a Sea Ray to a Bayliner. They're both using the same exact engine. So they're putting a Mercury a Mercruiser in there or a Mercury outboard. It's owned by Brunswick. That's the only motor you're going to get. So any price difference is strictly the price difference in the quality of the build, the quality of the material, and the amount of the material that they're using. So, um, but on the other hand, the most important thing about the boat is the power, the power of it. Um, it's the exact same. So uh, the reliability, hey, listen, it's going to be there. It, it's A Sea Ray is going to break down almost as much as a, a Bayliner because they've got the same exact motor. Now, there's a couple of different little things that can happen that cause issues um, in the way that they, you know, the way that they run the wiring and the electrical and things like that. But for the most part, hey, the, the reliability is in the motor and of it cranking up every time, uh, so they're going to be very similar. Same thing with, uh, you know, uh, let's say a Cobalt, uh, which uses Mercruiser and Volvo, uh, versus, let's say, maybe a Stingray. Um, uh, Tahoe is going to use Mercruiser as well. But, um, again, the power plant is identical. So that is one thing. If you want to save some money and you're not going to be running out, you know, 50 miles offshore, hey, maybe it's okay to get that value model if you're going to be happy with it, but know the differences in how they're made. And another quick little way to check, hey, is this a quality boat, is look at the specs and look at the dry weight. It's going to tell you how thick and how heavy that boat is. Uh, a couple things to look out for, like on the Bryant, um, the weight of the Bryant is much higher than I expected because they have a tower standard on this model. So that's going to be included in the dry weight. So you've got to look at the length and the beam. So the overall length, the LOA, uh, and the beam, which is the width, and, and then make your comparison because boats aren't all exactly the same size. Uh, so the Cobalt 220 coming in at 3,700 pounds uh, is about the same weight as the Crownline 210 SS. Now, how deep is the boat? How what's the beam? Uh, what's the full length? You, you may you can't just compare them weight to weight necessarily, uh, but look at all of those dimensions, and you'll be able to tell. Okay, look, the Bayliner uh, VR5 is 3,300 pounds, uh, and we'll compare that to the Cobalt of 3,700. Um, you know, this one's a 21 foot boat. This one's a 21 foot, uh, but it's a little bit deeper. Well, I don't know exactly on these, but look at those things and it can tell you a little bit more about the quality and then certainly the price tag as well. Um, the premium brands, they're going to have a few more gadgets and gizmos, um, but they're also a heavier boat and they're going to be more expensive, uh, better quality material. Um, you know, three sixteenth stainless is heavier than aluminum and plastic and, and, uh, you know, chrome plated, uh, hardware. So those are all things to look for. The other thing that you want to look at is the Boat Buyer Secret Weapon Toolkit. You can grab that for free. You can get it at the expo at usboatexpo.com. You can also just go grab it at boatbuyersecretweapon.com slash toolkit. And it's free there as well. Um, so 
If you want to watch more videos, we've got over 100 videos on the channel now. There's a lot of information. If you want to dive more into how boats are built and the quality, uh, we're also doing some boat reviews. So I, I'm reviewing all these boats at the Boat Show, and those videos will be coming out very soon. Thanks for joining. Subscribe to the channel if you found this valuable. We're always releasing new content like this, and we'll catch you on the next video. But remember, life truly is better on a boat.